this is God's method I'm not twisting the scriptures I'm just showing you plain this is how God does things and if we want him to do stuff for us we got to get in line with the way he does things Well, the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today, and you walk with Him by saying words. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory. Say glory. Glory, glory in His wisdom. Is there glory in wisdom? Sure. Yes. Yeah, tons of it. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Is there glory in might? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Is there glory in riches yes but let him that glories glory in this that he understands and knows me me who me the Holy Ghost you know how many people don't know they don't know the Lord God as the Holy Ghost the one who's in the earth but let him that glories glory in this so there is glory in this mm -hmm. say there's glory, there's glory. in this understanding say understanding, understanding. And, knowing and knowing the Holy Ghost. the Holy Ghost that's what we're gonna talk about today understanding and knowing the Holy Ghost how he does things who he is there's glory in it in what in understanding and knowing him mm -hmm. him who him the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today we're glorying in that we understand and know mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost so I can get glory I can be in glory by understanding and knowing the Holy Ghost which would include those three things that he just talked about wisdom and might and riches let him that glories glory in this that he understands and knows me the Holy Ghost that I am the Lord is it good to know the Holy Ghost is the Lord yes. the Lord God in the earth today now the Lord is that spirit mm -hmm. right and when you understand say understand so there's things you got to understand mm -hmm. you got to understand that he's the one in the earth mm -hmm. if you're gonna know him you got to understand who he is how he got here all of those things that we preach on all the time mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today you walk with him by saying words understanding that that's how you walk with him is a huge benefit I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness judgment and righteousness where in the earth isn't that amazing Who's doing this the Holy Ghost where's he doing it in the earth when you die and go to heaven now he's doing this in the earth he's exercising these things in the earth which means we can know and understand him and glory in him when we get to heaven no here and now if we understand how he does things a lot of people don't understand how he does things we're gonna talk about it tonight isn't that good yes. let's go back to Genesis talking about understanding how God does things we could see God actually doing things can't we in Genesis chapter 1 yes. see now God's gonna do the same thing because he does that's he's God this is how he does things we just need to get in line with the way he does things say get in line, get in line. because when we get in line then he'll do things for us you understand yeah when we don't get in line then he does things for just for me <laughs> and the more we get in line the more we can have him doing things for us not because we're special it's because we're in line with him which makes us special Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them you ever heard this before so we're gonna see how he did things here and it says God created now who can we be talking about specifically in our dispensation God the Holy Ghost that does things this way God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them now what it would seem to me that it and this is the way that most of us read this is that God created man in his own image like himself and then he says it again in the image of God created he him like he was had to repeat himself because people didn't get it but the reality of what's going on here is God created man in the image that he made for man 
he had an image of man they understand I'm we're gonna this is how God does things he has an image first what he wants to create then created he him in his own image so first he imagined you could say first God say first God imagined first God imagined now wouldn't that have to be the case he didn't just come up with it he said I'm this one gonna do he thought about it first he saw he had an image of what he wanted to make you understand this he made he had an image and then he made man in that image are you getting this so God makes things in his image first all things listen so God had everything made in his own image first yes he made man in his own specific image so that we look an awful lot like God but the first image that God had to have was the image of what he wanted to make first God had an image of what he wanted to make man like and then he made man in the image of him is this making sense I'll keep driving this until we get there it's how God does things now look back look back up at uh, verse 26 Genesis 1 26 and God said let us make man in our image mm -hmm. after our likeness let's make man in our image God thought about it first say God thought about it first, God thought about it first. then they made him in our likeness let us make man in our image and after our likeness if that wasn't two different things why did he say it let us make man in our image and after our likeness are you here yes. I hope you're getting this more than it feels like it and God said let us make man in our image so we have an image this is what I need to get over across to you today this is how God does things if we want to get in line with the way God does things we're going to have to see that God makes an image first and then he creates it in that likeness of the image that he had is this making sense is this how God does stuff I'm gonna show you over and over and over. we're gonna go through this a lot but this is the way God he has an image first of what he wants to create then he creates it after that image it's a process and if you get in line with the process you can have whatever God tells you you can have because frankly he gave you a whole bunch of words here that he calls a vision or calls an image and when you get that you can you can enter into it okay this is how he does things it's how he does it today let's read on here verse 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the what the all the earth would that be good yes because we're on the earth so I'm telling you if you can get in line with this we can have dominion over all the earth if we don't get in line with the way God does it then we're gonna be behind mm -hmm. and God blessed them and said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion so according to this and I will support it by many other scriptures God had an image and then a likeness of that image that he made man in and then they had dominion say image, image. Likeness, likeness dominion, dominion. that's the process that's how God did it that's how God continues to do it today you have the image first then you speak which is how God created things you understand we speak the image and then we have the likeness appear and we have dominion in the earth get it straight say get it straight, get it straight. it's not complicated and you read this before probably Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there and they said one to another let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded verse 6 and the Lord said behold the people is one and they have all one language now I'm gonna bring out a couple other translations here because it kind of affects your your thinking a little bit different the good news translation says 
the people they're as one like us meaning they were all one like us God came down and saw them that they were so were they one person no but they were one in their speech he'd already said that several times here they were all saying the same thing say saying the same thing, saying the same thing. which God says is like him and the Lord said behold the people is one or they're one like us they have all one language and this they begin to do the good news translation again says this is the beginning and now nothing will be restrained for them which they have imagined to do God said they're like us they're speaking all in one accord in agreement like us and now what they imagine anything they imagine they'll be able to do why would God say that about them because God created man in his likeness so man functions in the same way that's my point here say man, man. functions Function. in the same, the same way are you here God made us you and me male and female notice that he didn't make anything in between he didn't make 67 other varieties male and female created he them am I wrong no. right but he made us like him meaning so if if they which they began to do it was the beginning of them be able to do whatever they imagined are you here because they were made in God's likeness mm -hmm. so that when they imagine something and speak in agreement mm -hmm. what happens God said it'll come to pass right. why would that be because that's exactly the way God made man it's exactly the way God made everything including us in his image and his likeness are you here yes. let us go down and there he confounded their language that they may not understand one another's speech and so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city they mean they stopped building it now side note I was just meditating upon this imagine the intelligence of God how smart God is now if you had to create a language what would that would that take some intelligence I mean you literally have to for everything you got to come up with the way to frame it the syntax all of these things and come up with a language would that take a lot of effort would that take a lot of intelligence I would suggest that if you met someone who created their own language and it wasn't just a bunch of gobbledygook you'd be like that is a really smart person mm -hmm. now remember Adam God created Adam in his likeness he had Adam name all of the things mm -hmm. so the original language was something Adam it was given to Adam to do mm -hmm. say it was given to Adam to do which means it was something that is innately built into people mm -hmm. right? right but here God in an instant say in an instant, in an instant created instantaneously instantaneously all the languages of the earth in a moment of time imagine the intelligence of a being like that but by the way he's still doing it today when anyone receives the Holy Ghost what is the first evidence of them receiving him they begin to speak in an unknown language it's an unknown language to any person mm -hmm. unknown meaning we, we don't know what it is but it's a language and God is instantaneously creating a new language same God same Holy Ghost are you here yes. did that bless you yes. so anyway that was just a side note but anyway this is the way God does things he has you he, he gives you an image first say an image first, image first and then he makes the image come to pass by speaking in agreement are you getting this this is God's method it's his way it's his idea so hey positive confessors and visualizers out there this is where it came from and we do it better because we know who we worship That's right. it works for them because they're made in the likeness of God mm -hmm. now were these people at the Tower of Babel that could do anything they imagined were they saved were they born again were they filled with the Holy Ghost yeah. no 
they were opposite yet it still functioned for them because it's the way God made man so if you can see it meaning imagine it and you can believe it which is conceiving it you can have it according to the scriptures if you can see it and believe it conceive it see yourself with it then you can have it is this the way God does things yes. yeah he built you this way now will it help to get in line with the way God does things or to go against it you get in line the church hasn't been in line most believers haven't been in line if you say some stuff like this they go ah, oh, I don't want anything to do with that if the worldly people are going oh does that work let's do it mm -hmm. they're building towers that reach unto heaven and the Christians are there no we won't have anything to do with that mind science stuff we don't want to do anything with our minds yeah we can tell <laughs> so God has to get you to change your image of yourself first do you think God knows this stuff that I've been talking about mm -hmm. or do you just forget it no he wrote it in his word for us to learn about and so he has to get if he wants to get you to change he has to get you to change your image of yourself first let's look further into it Genesis 15 verse 4 and behold the word of the Lord came unto him Abraham saying this shall not be thine heir but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir and he brought him forth abroad and said look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them and he said to him so shall thy seed be and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness is Abraham the father of our faith yes. is this part of him believing the Lord and being counted for righteousness yes what did he have to do he had to see himself as the father of many nations before he could become the father of many nations mm -hmm. and then he had to start calling it that way mm -hmm. say so he had to see himself first because up to that point he didn't see himself as the father of many nations in fact he was complaining about it right there in the verses before that what am I gonna do I, I can't be the father of many nations I don't have any kids mm -hmm. and I'm old and God corrected him and said hey no that uh, you know that child you were gonna have with your servant there that's not gonna be your heir are you getting this yes. God had to change Abraham's image of himself so he took him out he said look at the stars look say look. Look, look he had to see what he would be before he could become it mm -hmm. no I don't like it that way it sounds weird that's just I'm just telling you the way God has you do things God has to get you to change your image of yourself first he said to Abraham look behold the stars the future was that would that be in the future or would that be in Abraham's past most people are looking at their past God's saying you got to look at your future and think about your future the way I'm saying it's gonna be all right this is how God does things this is what he calls faith whether you like it or not Genesis chapter 18 and verse verse 9 and they said unto him where is Sarah here's God came down visiting them and they said unto him where's Sarah and he said behold in the tent <laughs> like he didn't know and he said I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life and lo Sarah thy wife shall have a son and Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him mm -hmm. verse 11 now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying after I am waxed old shall I have pleasure my Lord being old also and the Lord said unto Abraham where did wherefore did Sarah laugh saying shall I of a surety bear a child which am old is there anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed I will return unto thee according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son and then Sarah denied saying I laughed not for she was afraid and he said nay but thou didst laugh are you here yeah. That's such a great story I love that 
but here, the point I'm trying to bring out is Sarah did Sarah see herself as someone who could have a child no it was laughable to her it made, it made her laugh she only laughed out loud because she was behind the tent but everybody knows tents are not soundproof <laughs> right did Sarah see herself as young enough to have children no it was, she she saw herself get this she saw herself as an old barren woman mm -hmm. and no wonder because she'd spent all her, her life growing up into an old barren woman so God had to change Sarah's image of herself yeah. and how did he do it he did it by saying the word to her God spoke words to her and it began to change Sarah's image of herself mm -hmm. now let me ask you a question if the Holy Ghost like in our dispensation right we have a lot of benefits they didn't have at that time but if we were to get into the room of Holy Ghost worship which I talk about all the time and he began to show you things to come show you things to come show you things to come for you mm -hmm. you understand well, and he began to show Sarah put her in that room of worshiping the Holy Ghost he began to show Sarah that she was gonna have a child she would be younger wouldn't she mm -hmm. he would be showing her things to come look what came for Sarah God came did something to her turned back the time of life and she had a child if God could show her that she would have seen herself she, say she would have seen herself she would have seen herself younger and with child you have to see yours if you're gonna believe God for youth renewal you've got to see yourself younger in the future I know that sounds semi ridiculous to your natural mind but that's the way it is if you want to see yourself healed you're gonna to have to see yourself in the future as being a healed person if you want to see yourself rich you got to see yourself in the future as a rich person mm -hmm. this is God's method I'm not I'm not twisting the scriptures I'm just showing you plain this is how God does things and if you want to walk with God remember glory in this that you understand and know me and if we understand and know understand and know the Holy Ghost we have to understand and know that this is how he does stuff and if we want him to do stuff for us we got to get in line with the way he does things mm -hmm. is this making sense yes. say I'm gonna get in line, get in line. With, the way the Holy Ghost with the way the Holy Ghost does things, does things. For, me. for me in the earth, in the earth. still in the earth remember mm -hmm. okay we understand and know him God did show Sarah her future by speaking the word and the Bible says that she believed God she's one of the founders of our faith she believed God so if she believed God she would have had to take that word that said she was going to have her youth renewed mm -hmm. she had to have her youth renewed because she was past the time where women have children mm -hmm. Do you understand yeah. so she had to see herself the way God saw her according to the word mm -hmm. now are there any verses of Scripture that say we have youth renewal yes. that God renews our youth so say this I see myself, I see myself younger, younger in the future. future and you get that image of yourself and you start moving towards it you understand it's not all about the image and that's where some people will get it all I'm not trying to conjure up an image I don't have to conjure it up God gave me the image mm -hmm. that's how God did it with Abraham that's how God did it with Sarah when the vision is clear the results will appear when you see it clearly yourself in the future or in the word or in what God has said to you then the results just take care of themselves it's not as big of a deal as we make it out to be the Bible calls it a sure word of promise it's going to happen it's clear and then you talk as if it had already happened it's as good as done when the vision is clear as if it's as good as done the results will appear that's faith John chapter 16 verse 13 how be it when he say he he, he the Spirit of truth who's that the Holy Ghost the Spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth 
for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he say he he, he will show you things to come now when the Holy Ghost comes according to Jesus what's one of the things he's gonna do unless I get caught up in the rest of that verse it would take me too long you understand he say he, he. the way he's gonna do things will show you say show you. show you show you things to come how's he gonna do things you ask one of the ways he does things is to show you things to come did he show Abraham things to come yes. did he show Sarah things to come that's how he does things so he's gonna do the same thing for you he's gonna show you things to come specifically and predominantly for you now a lot of people and this is sad in the church today they want the Holy Ghost to constantly show them and they might even read it this way that he's gonna show me things to come for you that makes me super special doesn't it that would be a gift of the word of wisdom a gift of the spirit of the word of wisdom which does happen is the spirit of God showing you by a gift of the spirit something that's going to happen but that's not what this is talking about because the gift of, of the word of wisdom only happens as the spirit wills for specific people that have the gift of the word of wisdom is this making sense yes. but this is this here Jesus is saying he will show you things to come meaning everyone who has the Holy Ghost he will this is how he functions this is how he operates he shows you the thing that is to come for you say the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Shows, me shows me things to come, things to come. for me, for me. And that's how he does things that's how he did things it's how he does things how he's gonna keep doing things mm -hmm. he's gonna show you your future he's and then you're gonna walk into it mm -hmm. and we're gonna get in line with it so that we can do it better mm -hmm. is this making sense yes. So this is not the word of wisdom if it was the word of wisdom it would only apply to certain people that had the word of wisdom operating it's not that he's showing you things that are to come for you it's how he does things it's what he does it's the Holy Ghost method for taking you to the future I mean that might sound strange but it shouldn't what's tomorrow the future if he wants to have you changed into something better tomorrow which he does by the way he's going to show you say show me, show me. he's gonna show me me mm -hmm. in the future mm -hmm. well that sounds strange I, I know this about the Holy Ghost well you're learning about the Holy Ghost and I tell you these things function best in the room of Holy Ghost worship when you learn he's God and you begin to worship him when I'm worshiping him he begins to show me yes. things to come right and not necessarily about everybody else sometimes that does happen especially when you're you know operating in a an office or something like that right but predominantly he shows you you in the future say he shows me he shows me, me, me in the future, in the future. and you'll see you go who's what's that he goes that's you from the future are you here did he do it with Abraham yes did he do it with Isaac I mean with with Sarah yes. so uh, where did I say second Corinthians 3 verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is Liberty there is freedom would healing be a freedom or a Liberty yes. Yes. would prosperity be a Liberty or freedom yes. where the Spirit is Lord there is Liberty but we all how many is that so that doesn't mean just the ones who have the word of wisdom but we all with open face beholding as in a glass or as a in a mirror mm -hmm. the glory of the Lord are changed into the same what image. what image, image? we're changed what are we changed into the image what if we don't have the image what are we changed into nothing. nothing if you don't have the image of the Lord that he's changing and this is why I started off in trying to get you to understand that from Genesis that it was God's image that he was changing you into mm -hmm. it, it wasn't that and in his likeness 
but he had an image for you same thing here we're changed into the same image that God has for you as in you're looking in a mirror and you're seeing the image that he has for you and when you look into the mirror and you see that image that he has for you you're changed into that image by looking at it by observing it by thinking on it imagine a mirror that you look into and what the reflection that you see back is you from the future I look into this image here now is it is it God's image of you healed is God's image of you and we'll get we'll get that into a second here I got a scripture for you but is when I when I look into God's image his mirror is his image of me the thing his his idea for me is it to be healed mm -hmm. so when I look into this image his image of for me when I look into it what am I seeing me healed when I look is it his image of me prosperous when I look into that image what should I be seeing me prosperous me from the future mm -hmm. are you getting this yeah. how about is it his image of me his image of me to be have my youth renewed mm -hmm. yeah. so when I look into that image what am I seeing mm -hmm. me with my youth renewed mm -hmm. are you getting this mm -hmm. we all with open face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image that he has for you from one glory to the next glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord yes. is this how God does things mm -hmm. is the Spirit of the Lord God yes. well he's called the Lord there right there he's the Spirit of the Lord this is how he does it he changes you by the image he shows you now Habakkuk 2 2 says write the vision and make it plain upon tables write the vision now if Habakkuk were a prophet and he wrote it down what would it be in fact he did he goes on and writes the vision mm -hmm. what is that vision written out what would you call that scripture mm -hmm. that's what I would call it yeah. if Habakkuk wrote the vision it would be called a scripture God told him to write the vision that vision became a scripture okay. God calls his scripture what vision are you here yeah. do you see that his vision for you all the promises of God are his vision for you so when you you behold the in the mirror the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image the image that he has for you would be scripture so this is like the magic mirror when I look up and I say and I look into it I look into the perfect law of Liberty I'm looking at it I'm say I'm looking at it I'm, looking at I'm staring it. at it I'm thinking about it I'm seeing myself reflected back through this me in the future I'm healed me in the future I'm prosperous me in the future I'm younger are you seeing this what's it showing me back not the image of me right now the image of me reflected through the word in the future I'm wealthy I'm healed my youth is renewed so we're changed by an image did you see that 2nd Corinthians 3 16 17 while looking at the image James chapter 1 verse 25 but whoso looketh say looketh what does looketh mean to see. to see to behold to peer at to gaze to envision right whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and what continues therein meaning continues looking into it what's the perfect law of liberty we just talked about now the Spirit of the Lord is where the Spirit is Lord there is liberty here's the perfect law of liberty which the Holy Ghost wrote it's his image of you are you getting this when I continue to look at it whoso looks into the perfect law or has that image 
looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed this man shall be what he's behold are you getting this this man shall become what he looked at go to Colossians I want you to see it I think you think I'm making this stuff up we have to see the image and when the image is clear the results will appear you have to continue therein and I'm just telling you this because when you get in the room of Holy Ghost worship he begins to change the image of you Colossians 3 verse 10 and have put on put on means you need to do something about it right put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after what the image of him that created him God has an image of you where can we find that image well in the scriptures number one but also in worshiping him because he said as we look into that mirror he changes us from glory to glory he does he does the changing according to that image put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him is this how God does things yes. glory in this that you understand and know how God does things Holy Ghost does things this way mm -hmm. so I submit to you that as you learn to know the Holy Ghost as you learn to worship the Holy Ghost be aware of these things he's going to begin to change the image of you for you you're going to begin to see yourself the way you are in the future that's him doing it he will show you things to come Holy Ghost worship transforms you into the things that are to come when you're worshiping the Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost he begins to transform you into you from the future I'm not only telling you it's possible it's God's plan he's his image of you listen his image of you is so radically different from what your image of you has been and we need to stay in his presence long enough until he can he can change it rewire the way we think about ourselves. because he has plans he has things for us to do he has operations for us to perform in the earth and we can't get there from where we are right now we have to be changed from one glory to the next glory to the next glory until we don't even recognize ourselves anymore are you here who's doing it even is by the Spirit of the Lord hold up your hand and say this Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I'm, willing I'm willing to be changed, to be changed. into the image into the that image. you have for me that I may be effective in the earth, in the earth. All, the way, all the way till the end, till the end. in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen well the fact is we are changed by beholding the future you the image of you which is not only contained in the word it's contained in the Holy Ghost's image of you mm -hmm. you understand he guides you into it he teaches you all things say he teaches me, he teaches me. how to think about myself, about myself how to imagine myself, to imagine myself. And it's all by the Spirit of the Lord it's his method let me pray for you Holy Ghost I pray for these people I ask you to seal this into them and begin to show them and he says I shall says the Spirit of the Lord begin Holy to show Ghost you you in the future today. and if you worship me enough I will even take Holy you there Ghost I will guide you I will show today. you I will strengthen you and you will be strengthened Holy even by Ghost angels as they take up your today. hands and will walk together into the future Holy and be a great Ghost blessing unto many today. in Jesus name Amen the Father is in heaven Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your God in the earth today